me. I was just contemplating the spindle assembly checkpoint. One of many things I have to do while I'm bio -core. What's that? You would want to know more about the spindle assembly checkpoint? Of course, why not? Let's get started. The spindle assembly checkpoint, commonly referred to as the SAC, is the cell's safeguard against premature anaphase. In normal cellular function, the sac prevents the cell from entering anaphase until all sister chromatids are properly attached to the spindle and aligned on the metaphase plate. This is an image of the cell in metaphase. Let's break it down into a simpler schematic. Here we can see the cell's spindle poles, microtubules, and the sister chromatids, which are currently aligned along the metaphase plate. The microtubules are attached to the kinetochores. In normal function, after the sister chromatids are aligned along the metaphase plate, the sac requirements are met once these chromatids are properly attached to the spindle. Here, the microtubules are able to pull the sister chromatids apart toward the spindle poles. If the requirements for the sac are not met, then anaphase will not proceed until this is resolved. What? Why should we care about the sac? It's very important for cellular division. Here's why. If the sac is not functioning correctly, the sister chromatids will not be properly pulled apart, and one daughter cell will end up with more chromosomes than the other. This is called aneuploidy. Research has shown that aneuploidy can also occur as a result of chromosomal instability caused by defects in the sac. Aneuploid cells can develop into tumors. A properly functioning sac is therefore necessary for normal cellular division and avoiding cancer. So now that we know why we should care about the sac, how does it work exactly? Now this is a question that scientists have been investigating and they discovered that there are two key criteria that need to be met before the cell can proceed through the sac into anaphase. These two criteria are one, that the microtubules are attached to the kinetochore, and two, that those attached microtubules apply the proper amount of tension to those kinetochores. Let's talk about this in some more detail. We've already talked about how microtubules attach to the kinetochores of sister chromatids. Now let's consider tension. The required tension on the kinetochores by the microtubules only occurs when the sister chromatids are properly aligned along the metaphase plate. If either one of these criteria are not met, then two proteins, MAD and BUB, are able to interact with the kinetochore and form the mitotic checkpoint complex. The MCC will then bind to and inactivate CDC20, another protein. When the checkpoint has been met, the MCC doesn't form and CDC20 is active. CDC20 then directs the anaphase promoting complex, commonly known as the APC, to degrade cyclin B. Cyclin B is a signal for metaphase, and once it is degraded, the cell enters anaphase. To summarize, when the sac is not satisfied, MCC is formed and prevents cyclin B from degradation. When the sac is satisfied, MCC is not formed and cyclin B is degraded, which allows the cell to progress to anaphase. So now we know what the sac is, why we should care about it, and a little bit about how it works. However, it's a very complicated mechanism, and we still don't yet fully understand everything there is about it. So there's still a lot left to learn. Maybe one day you'll be the one to come and